Hello, uh, Peter Blackwood, uh, returning after quite a long time from uh, painting icons because I've been away. But I'm back and uh, painting again on a very cold Saturday morning in Melbourne. This time I'm painting an icon of St. Augustine of Hippo and this image which I uh, think I will use as a model uh, comes from the uh, uh, Icon uh, Monastery website and there are uh, aspects I like about this. It's uh, very simple uh, and is uh, something of, uh, picks up some of the, the, the classical aspects of an icon of uh, St. Augustine. That is a brown head, a bishop, a long hair, long beard and holding the Bible. So, uh, first task go to the sketch pad to uh, map out and plan an icon of Augustine of Hippo. Well now here's a fine shot of my elbow as uh, we start to measure up the, the sketch pad so that uh, we're looking at the same uh, dimensions as the uh, uh, panel space and starting with a very hard pencil. So it's a bit hard to see because it's a, about a 4H pencil for uh, putting in the first uh, sketching, uh, placing the head, uh, dividing the head into four so that you get the eyes in the middle of the face and the uh, nose in the correct position. Shape in the hair. Find the ears. Top of the ears level with the eye. Bottom of the ears level with the bottom of the nose. Just uh, taking uh, three quarters of the head to get to uh, the shoulders and then the full head length to get the width across the, uh, across the arms at the middle of the chest level. Put the book in place. And the hand. The sleeve. Now with the darker pencil about a Mm, a 5H. Uh, so this is a softer lead and as you can see <coughs> much more cl clear, easier to see. Uh, we're thinking in mainly in shading at the moment. <coughs> So a quick jump to the uh, prepared panel and getting the 
uh, this, the checkpoints, just uh, marking with pencil, uh, firstly the centre line and then where the top of the panel is and where the major spots will be. Uh, and I started using the three brush instead of the hog hair. This is just a yellow ochre with water. So just very quickly roughing in uh, as with the sketching. This is all done in uh, four, being shown four times the normal speed. And using the dividers just to check those uh, distances. This is a, a, a thick brush so that um, there's a lot of refinement will occur within these uh, rather buffy lines. So now with the uh, number three brush and some egg tempera now in the uh, with the yellow ochre, the egg tempera which is one part egg yolk, one part white wine. And now this is a bit easier to see and also we're refining the shapes a bit now, working pretty much within the uh, buffy strokes of the hog hair brush. <clears throat> Let's start to uh, learn something about uh, this character, about uh, Augustine of Hippo. This piece is written by David Rankin, where he writes, Aurelius Augustinus, Augustinus, arguably perhaps the greatest figure in the Western Church, was born at Thagast in North Africa in 35 354 of the Common Era, the son of a devout Christian mother, Monica, and a pagan father, Patricius. He lived only five of his 76 years outside of North Africa. Schooled at Medora and Carthage, his reading of Cicero's uh, work Hortensius inspired him at the age of 18 to pursue truth. This was the same year that his father died and his own son, Adiodatus, was born. He taught briefly at uh, Thagast and then in Carthage and then in 383. Perhaps to escape the suffocating presence of his mother, he took ship to Rome itself where he was accepted an imperial post teaching rhetoric. In the intervening years in his quest for truth, he had read the Bible but without real interest and engaged as a hearer with the uh, Manichaean sect, while in the end he ended his association with this group, their influence positively or negatively continued to inform his, uh, uh, his quest for the rest of his life. After a short stay in Rome, he accepted the imperial post of Professor of Rhetoric at Milan, and his move there in 384 began for him a journey from Platonism to Christianity, from Milan to Cassium, to Ostia to Thagast, and thence to Hippo in North Africa. In Milan, he met the formidable Bishop Ambrose, who introduced him to Platonism and to the Greek fathers like Basil. In the garden of his residence at Milan, he experienced his famous conversion, went on retreat in Cassiu Kiacum, I'm not pronouncing that correctly, I'm sorry, where he wrote his uh, soliloquies, and thence to Ostio, where he experienced his famous vision. So let's pause our account there for a little while, uh, because uh, now we're starting to uh, work on, on the face. And as I have done before, I'm using cerulean blue in order to put in the shadows, the shading, to shape the face and the hand. And uh, while this is a curious colour for, 
for shading on uh, uh, flesh tones. It works quite interestingly because when you cover that with um, uh, with yellow uh, based pigments, uh, the yellow and the blue make a, a greener colour, which is a much more conventional uh, way of painting um, shadows in flesh tones. So here the membranes being uh, added, coat after coat, of the uh, uh, the blue, the cerulean blue, is kind of vanishing. You can see it as shadow, and now I start to add. Uh, titanium white to the basic flesh tone mixture in order to start uh, painting highlights. And this will take some time because there'll be a number of different uh, layers of highlight continuing to add uh, the titanium white as we go uh, but also from time to time putting on another glaze of the basic uh, color mainly the yellow um, or the, the golden ochre to put some chroma back into uh, the color because uh, titanium white tends to sort of wash all the colors out. Anyway let's hear some more about uh, this remarkable man that uh, uh, has been written by uh, David Rankin. So uh, following Monica's death, Monica his mother, uh, he returned to North Africa and there uh, determined to set up a retreat of sorts for like-minded men. He took a side trip to Hippo uh, and the untimely death of his son saw a life-changing experience where he was ordained in Hippo effectively by force by the church there made co-bishop and then on the death of the bishop in 395 was elected in his place. And so it was as bishop between 397 uh, and the end of his life that he uh, wrote his monumental works, uh, his confessions in which he uh, uh, explores the uh, personal life in the extent of his own journey to faith uh, widely regarded as a major text in the Christian canon, indeed in the Western literary canon itself. He wrote the De Trinitate between 399 and 419, uh, which uh, has so influenced the development of central doctrine in the Western Church. From 411 onwards, he began a series of anti uh, Donatist writings in which he developed his ecclesiastical thought. Uh, from there on there are a number of other uh, major works which uh, um, challenge um, some of the uh, um, heresies of the day. Uh, he uh, influenced the church's thought on in many areas. His On Grace and Free Will is one of uh, uh, these books. In his later years he developed and published uh, his uh, Retractiones in which he amended, modified and even dismissed some of his earlier views on, the wide, on a wide range of matters. In 430 of the Common Era as the Arian Vandals besieged the city of Hippo, the great bishop and doctor of the church died. When the Vandals finally entered and burned the city, all that they left untouched were Augustine's cathedral and his library.
I'm using burnt umber for the hair. Uh, in the first instance, putting in the the darkest lines, and this is a a, a good solid mixture of of burnt umber. Once the basic lines are in place, then I'll use a more diluted uh, mixture of burnt umber to fill it in, and it will take a number of uh, uh, coats. I don't want to obliterate these main lines with the with the other uh, coats that I'm uh, laying down, therefore. Uh, not using so uh, heavy a mix. But still, as always, using a, a, a dry brush. To have a lighter mix doesn't mean having uh, uh, more paint. It means having more pigment in the mixture, less egg tempera. Mm. So here is the, uh, <coughs> the, light, the lighter version. More egg in the mixture. This will take a couple of coats to you know, sort of bring it up. Let's reinforce some of those darker lines. <coughs> and then this will be time to add a little bit of titanium white to make this mixture lighter and to put in a few highlights into the uh, into the hair uh, just still working with the dark pigment in eyelids, eye, eye lashes in. Now it's a mixture with the, the titanium white, and just putting in a few, a, a fairly modest highlight for starters. Again, it's just titanium white added to the burnt umber. It's a bit subtle at this stage. That subtle is good. Now I've mixed some uh, yellow ochre with a bit of uh, titanium white for the hair highlights. I'm using quite a small brush here. It's a number two. Again, always uh, Kalinsky. Now with Ercolano Red and a very fine brush, putting in the creases in the uh, upper eyelid, down the side of the nose, colour up the mouth a little bit. And then with um, a uh, 
quite a diluted um, mixture of the Ercolano red and a three brush, just a bit of blush. Let's do some repairs around the beard to define it a little better. Now with not quite pure white, but pretty close to it, a few final uh, highlights. Just on the nose, around the brow, top of the cheek. And we need to pay attention to the hand as well. And that will finish the flesh tones. Now in uh, this section we're running at uh, six times normal speed. Uh, just tidying up uh, some of the uh, bit of the face to make it a little bit more symmetrical than it was. I've also jumped a section here. I've put in uh, uh, creases and shading on the on the clothing, and now uh, just putting in the the base colour. This is I experimented with a number of different ways of getting a purple. Uh, and I tried uh, different reds with different blues, but have gone back to the stock standard uh, purple of this kind of um, uh, hue, the Caput Mortuum. But I have added some cadmium red to the uh, Caput Mortuum because I wanted to redden it up a bit, obviously. I've continued to use the, this mixture but added quite a bit of titanium white for the um, other sections. There's an undergarment which will end up being sort of bluey white and the um, pallium uh, which is going to be white but needs an under uh, coating uh, so that the the shading works better. Putting in some a little bit of uh, blue in the undergarment here. Sorry, you can't see the little bit I did underneath the uh, underneath the arm. Now I've added uh, well, it's pretty much the same amount of white uh, to the base mix for putting in the first highlights on the. Chasuble, the overgarment.
Just restating some of the darker shadows with the original uh, underpainting. And now for the pallium, just adding more titanium white to the uh, original mixture and uh, pretty much covering the the whole the whole area. Bit of pure white in the undergarment. It's not much undergarment there, and there's a tiny bit just uh, under the um, <laughs> out of sight. You can see my hand busily painting away there. And now some more titanium white. This is pretty much pure titanium white, uh, and but I'm uh, just getting it down uh, without worrying too much about what's showing underneath. I'm not having it. This isn't final coat, um, so you can still see the uh, caput mortuum and white underneath. But when that's dry and the next coat uh, goes on, that will be pretty much pure white and uh, will uh, make the garment look nice and white, which is what it is, what I want it to look like. Get the thumb out of the way. That's better. Now going back with white again, and this coat will make it look much whiter leaving a few little um, sort of slightly darker areas of the, the highlight. Another coat of pure white will just make it look whiter. To restate just some of those shaded lines a bit. Let's put a few in there too. It looked pretty a pretty pretty bland. So I've just put in a few more lines but I've then gone over with a very thin coat of white to uh, even it out a bit. The pallium also goes over the shoulder. Now another highlight on the chatable, on the outer garment. Just more titanium white added to the uh, the first highlight mix, but only covering well covering a lot less of the of the section that needs highlighting.
Now, I've, this is pretty much pure white. There is a little bit of the, the base in it. And this is, these are final highlights. Just needed a bit of, uh, bit of sparkle uh, on some of the uh, surfaces. And this is a glaze. This is a, a very uh, dilute uh, red, um, cadmium red glaze. And it just took some of the bling off the, uh, off the highlights and reddened up the whole surface. Uh, now I've added some blue to the uh, caput mortem to make this uh, very dark, nearly black. Uh, crosses. In the model it is uh, straight black which I thought was pretty boring. Also it had some decorations which I thought were tizzy so I've left them off. So now it's time to paint the book and this uh, edge is uh, burnt sienna. It's a nice rich reddy brown colour. Kind of just with a light pencil penciling in where the jewels will go. Uh, in retrospect, I got it completely wrong. And I've, I'm putting on a yellow ochre here. Again, completely wrong. This is uh, cadmium red. Uh, it's a deep cadmium red. So I've added some uh, some red to the yellow to make the orange. That's a much better colour. This is yellow ochre with a lot of titanium white to put in the, the pages. Uh, straight lines. I'm getting better at it and happier doing it freehand. Now putting in the jewels. These are done with the cadmium red deep and with the ultramarine blue. Just making a little three-dimensional by uh, adding some white to for the edges. I need to come back and do them. It didn't work out all that well. Let's put some edges and this is adding titanium white to that orange mixture and uh, lightening up the, uh, particularly around the jewels, putting in some hatching. Now some clasps, and this is just the uh, burnt sienna for the uh, clasps on the book. Then they're decorating later on and putting some of the orange mix on the under sleeve and some of the lighter putting these uh, <laughs> pearls on and this is just done by stamping with a uh, pure white uh, titanium white Let's put a decoration on the clasps So now it's time for putting in the background. So I've loaded up my squirrel mop with a good dose of uh, unbleached titanium. It gives a good coverage like titanium white does, but of course it's not white, it's yellow and it has less chroma than yellow ochre so it doesn't it's not um, as bright it's quite uh, 
opaque, but it does, this will need a, a couple of coats because I put, do put it on quite thin. And it's a bit fiddly just getting around, around the edges. I particularly struggle getting around the, uh, the left side because I'm right handed. And sometimes I turn the icon upside down. But uh, I didn't this time. The good thing about this mop is that it has a very fine point, so you can do quite a fine detail with it and then lean on it and give it good, uh, quick coverage. No, I've given in back to the little uh, three Kalinsky to, to do the, the fine edges. That's why I can sort of lean my hand on something to keep it steady. I'm using a pair of compasses and burnt sienna for the halo. Never done it uh, like that before uh, on the uh, uh, vertical and it worked really well. Now for the inscription. Augustine. Of Hippo. So there we have Augustine of Hippo. A couple of things that I've learned in this painting of the saint. The firstly is that adding a little bit of cadmium red deep to the caput mortem helped a great deal. Particularly putting the glaze of red cadmium on at the end just gave that bit of a lift. The other thing is the uh, the halo. I have usually done the halo with the uh, pair of compasses with the icon lying flat. <clears throat> this time, for the first time, I put it on the vertical and it worked much better. What I found was that it didn't start with a heavy line as it usually does when it's flat because of the way in which uh, gravity operates and gives it a bit of a gush at the, at the outset. It's not working with the gravity in the same way. So it came onto the panel nice and smooth and even. What a wonderful discovery. Thank you for watching uh, this video of me painting uh, the icon of Saint Augustine of Hippo in this uh, icon diary. Uh, leave a like, subscribe if you like, and we'll see you next time.